I remember one of the first auditions I had, it was one of those cattle calls where there's just like 30 girls in the hallway. And the woman who was behind the desk looks at me and goes, did you leave school to do this? I said, yeah. She goes, you should go back. When I was about 15 years old, I believe that God gave me a word that I was going to make it in entertainment. It is a lot like that Emma Stone audition sequence in La La Land, like a head to toe, look you up and down, thanks, and then you leave. <laughs> you hear thank you enough times, it starts to lose its meaning. One said, her look is great, but there's just something off about her. One of the people on the panel just said, you're not taking this seriously, get out. And I cried for about three hours. I don't know who I am without this thing. And I just sensed him speak again and say, you're gonna get this career and it's not gonna be enough for you. I'm it for you. I think for the first time I felt that it didn't matter whether or not I made it because he knew me and he didn't need me a different way. And it was funny how quickly I forgot and had to be reminded I grew up idolizing and idealizing romance and always loved it. Um, you know, the art I consumed and created usually had something to do with a romance narrative. We got married and our first couple of years of marriage were just wonderful. And it was this thing I had wanted my whole life was happening. We had this puppy, super cute. We were gonna, you know, try out the parenting stuff with a dog for a little bit. Um, and then about two weeks later, found out I was pregnant. We're gonna do the baby thing. After Eliza was born, Jason was dealing with a lot of burnout where he was working and a lot of pain. And, you know, you're not sleeping, so no one's thinking rationally. There was a, just this sense of breaking that happened within our marriage because I could no longer be there for him in the way that I think he needed and he couldn't be there for me. And so there was just so much miscommunication. There was so much just wires getting crossed. And I really just started to believe that he did not love me and that I had failed and I just was never gonna be enough for him. That rejection narrative was getting even more pervasive. I was sitting at my piano just weeping to God and I just kept saying like, why doesn't he want me? Why doesn't he like me? Why am I not satisfied? Why isn't this easier? Why, why doesn't he love me the way that I need to be loved? And I sensed God speak again and he said, because he's not me. It's very humbling to think that you're this evolved person and find out the things that you struggled with at 15, you struggle with right now. That was the time I was gonna have my babies and we were gonna do the mom thing. And I, th this was just the time that I would bunker down and raise my children and went to our first doctor's appointment and got to hear the most beautiful little heartbeat. We were like, okay, well, the first ultrasound is taken care of, you know, baby looks good. Like we've heard a heartbeat, we're fine. And um, so I went in for a follow-up appointment about three weeks later and uh, there was no heartbeat. It's just a resounding silence. What? 
no, like we did everything right. This is, this was the rainbow baby. Like this was, this is what? I kept saying to God, I was like, it's not supposed to be like this. It's not supposed to be like this. I should be holding Daisy, like she should be here. And God just said again, I know. He's still enough, you know, as I wait and as I grieve, like he's near and enough. And as wonderful as motherhood is, it can't be my identity. It can't be what I stake my life on, just as a career and, and a passion are beautiful things, but they're not the best thing. And marriage is a beautiful thing, but it's not the thing. And again, God in his kindness has allowed each of those to fail. And I'm grateful, weirdly, because it has allowed me to see that he's the only thing that's not gonna leave me wanting. And I can delight in the beautiful, great things that he's given and have peace in knowing that he is the greatest of those things. I keep driving down this stretch of road One of the beautiful things about walking with the Lord is he never asked me to stop dreaming. He just said, trust me. And there's so many dreams, I think, in my own strength I would have never picked up again that I feel he's really led me back to. And music is one of those. Um, so this is a song called Greenville. And there are daisies by the roadside And I find it hard to believe My name is Hannah Lee and I am second. There was a time before I knew you. There was a time. 